a little bit of where we left off on Wednesday uh, last week. So let us pray. Father, thank you tonight for the word of the Lord, for the people of the Lord that are present here to sit at your feet and hear the word of God. We pray that they are blessed tremendously in their spirit and their soul as well as their body, Lord. We thank you for wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we leave here wiser and stronger than what we came in. We give you thanks for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and understanding. Holy Spirit, have your way. Open up our ears, open up our eyes, open up our understanding. Jesus sent you to teach us, to lead us, and guide us, and to show us things to come. And we are here to receive. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. And I'm going to cover a few areas uh, that we, we've shared before. Um, and hopefully we can get this uh, in here tonight uh, as we get ready to wrap up this month's uh, financial boot camp 2011. Uh, Twelve ways to be uh, successful and uh, just some ways to uh, get out of debt and uh, have victory in your life to bring increase in your life. So the Lord is good and the Lord is gracious and uh, he is our provider and he is our source. So in Deuteronomy chapter um, number 20, Eight, um, and let's look at uh, let's look at verse number one, Deuteronomy twenty eight and verse one. Then they will go to Deuteronomy eight, but let's go to chapter twenty eight first. And we've shared with you uh, for success and prosperity increase in your life uh, to have the Word of God as the basis and the foundation of it. Well, if we put God's word first, we put God's first first in our lives, if we seek that all these other things uh, will be added uh, unto us. So we want to sure that God is first, so no matter where we go in life or how God blesses us in life, uh, we will have God as our source, that we would worship the creator more than the created thing or the things that uh, he gives us in this life. Amen. So in Deuteronomy chapter number 28, in verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Above all the nations of the earth. So he says he's going to set us on high. Or what I look at is what God is saying, an exalted place. So God wants to position us in a place of blessing, in a place where we know that God's favor is upon us. So a place of blessing, a place of honor, a place of, of favor to where God supplies all of our needs, to where God takes care of us, to where there is all sufficiency, all sufficiency. Uh, all sufficiency in our lives. The Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want, we shall not lack, and we shall not be in need. So we look to God, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to the Lord, who's already blessed us with every spiritual blessing uh, in heavenly places. Uh, Christ became poor, that we would become rich. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 8, number 8. So it's an exalted place. Thank God we have been positioned in Christ in a place of ultimate honor. Uh, so God is going to bless us. He's going to take care of us. He's a heavenly father. And he already knows what we have need of even before we ask him. So uh, God loves us just that much to make sure that all of our needs are met and that we are taken care of. So we don't have to worry uh, take thought for our life, what we're going to drink, what we're going to put on. Uh, God already knows that we have a need of all those things. So we seek God's kingdom first, and then he supplies us with the things that we uh, do need. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 8, and uh, let's look specifically uh, at verse number 18. Uh, as we experience God's mercy, 
uh, in our lives, even in a time of uh, testing and storm, uh, even in wilderness experiences, even in times of drought, times of famine, uh, times of pestilence, no matter what's going on in our life, uh, we must understand, and it says in verse number 18, uh, that thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power with the right, the authority of the ability to get wealth, to get increased, to multiply, that he established God has a purpose for what he does in our lives. His covenant uh, with us, which he swear unto uh, thy fathers as it is this day. So when we remember that it's the Lord our God, for it is he, God, who gives the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear, which he promised unto our fathers as, as it is this day. So God has promised to bless us. And God is not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should repent. I believe if we get on the path, we get on the straight and the narrow, we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we begin to see the blessing of God. We begin to see the protection of God, the strength of God. We begin to see God do what he promised to do in our lives. So our lives must get better. We must see improvement. We must see progress. We must see increase. We must see multiplication in our lives because we are now connected to Jesus Christ, that we are born again. He said, I come that you might have life, eternal life, the life of God, and that you might have that life more abundantly. That means better than you had it before. That means that you ought to see massive change and massive turnaround in every area of your life, spirit, soul, and body, because God came that the whole man, that we can walk in the fullness and the wholeness of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take care of us. He's going to supply the things that we need uh, to live a fruitful, productive, joyful, and light-shining life. And represent the king and represent the kingdom of God here on the earth. So God um, promised to bless our lives. Now let's go to uh, back into Second um, Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. So we honor the Lord with our lives. We honor Him with our bodies. We honor Him with our monies, and know that we are uh, stewards of what God gives us. We're owners of nothing but stewards of everything. So the Lord wants us to be wise stewards. He doesn't want us to be wasteful. He wants us to walk in the spirit of wisdom. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 9... And we talked uh, last week, Wednesday, Bible study uh, from Luke chapter 6 and 38 about the law of reciprocity or the law of return, that we will reap what we sow. So if we sow bountifully, we will also reap bountifully as well. So in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter, chapter number 9, and uh, let's look at verse... Let's look at verse number 6, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6. It says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall uh, reap also bountifully. So God is a generous God. He's generous. So if we have his spirit on the inside of us, then he helps us also to be generous, to be generous, to be loving, to be given. Matter of fact, giving is God's very nature. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if God's nature is giving, and we have been born again by the Spirit of God, and that same nature is on the inside of us, then we also have a giving nature, a giving spirit that should always come from our heart. And whatever we do, we should always do as unto the Lord uh, in helping other people. 
Jesus was always helping other people in some kind of way, uh, in supporting them, in ministering to them, and making sure they had a relationship uh, with God, and making sure uh, that their minds was, was, was sane, and making sure that if they had any kind of affliction or sickness in their bodies, that they were healed by the power of God. So the Lord is concerned about every area of our life where prosperity is concerned. Amen. Where prosperity is concerned. So he, he's not just concerned about one aspect of our life. Yes, he came to redeem us and bring us back in a proper relationship with the Father, but um, also to bring us back in a total covenant positioning, total covenant positioning, uh, of the fullness of the blessing of God in every area of our life. Everything that Adam forfeited by high treason, when he submitted uh, to the devil's words, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, restored back unto us. We just have to take advantage of what Christ Jesus, the Lord, has already done for us, just like sickness. Sickness in the cross and in the blood of Jesus is already settled. We're already healed. We just must lay stake and claim to what God promised. Is everybody going to be a mirror? No, I don't believe that because the Lord said the poor, you will have always with you. You can always have the poor with you, those that will have challenges and struggles uh, and needs in their lives. And so God will properly position people in society to help those that are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. So if we see as believers, for example, John uh, John talks about 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, uh, uh, that if we see our brother in need and we shut up our bowels and our heart of com compassion and mercy, he says, well then how dwells the love of God in you? Or if somebody comes to us hungry and we have food to give them and we don't share and give them the food to fill their belly, then we're not really fulfilling the work of God or the word of God. We said, well, you you go and you you'll be all right, and uh, well, I will we'll be praying for you, and then they leave your presence hungry. Mm -hmm. That's not fulfilling the will of God and the word of God. So um, God blesses us to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. We're blessed to be a blessing. So God favors us, not that we will be selfish in what we have, but that we will have that given nature of God and we show forth the love of God by our deeds as well as our, um, uh, our actions, not just saying it out of our mouth, but we're really exemplifying and we're carrying out uh, the great commission to go ye and uh, just to be a blessing. So as we bless other people, then God in return blesses us. Mm -hmm. And he makes sure, he'll make sure that we'll have more than enough. Mm -hmm. That our needs are always met and supplied in our lives. So he says uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, But this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, whether it's in love or forgiveness or, or, or mercy or money seed or tithes or offering or, or helping somebody that's in a desperate situation. If we're sowing and giving from our hearts as unto the Lord with the right attitude, if we sow bountifully, we shall also reap bountifully. So God has a way to reward us for what we do and how we're a blessing in other people's lives. We're loving, we're kind, we're, we're, we're forgiving, we're pulling out a few dollars out of our pockets, the food out of our covers, or taking somebody to sit down and eat a meal, or taking a meal to their house. He that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord, and then the Lord will repay us. A lot of times we do things to be, people do things to be seen of men. But the Lord says if you do that, you don't have a reward, you don't have a blessing for that. He says, but if you do it not looking for anything in return, he says, I'm the one that's going to reward you and bless you for what you've done because God sees everything. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good as well as the evil of all men. So nobody else may never recognize what you've done or what you do, but God sees. Amen. And he'll bless us in this life as well as the life that's to come. Verse 7 says, every man according as he purposes or makes up in his own mind, in his own mind, his own heart, so let him give. So nobody, 
put pressure on you, and you shouldn't put pressure on yourself. As you purpose in your heart, in in your ability to give. And sometimes you have going over uh, and beyond, but nobody should put pressure on you for giving this or that or the other, because God doesn't do that. Sometimes we put undue pressure on ourselves that God is not putting on us, or we allow other people to put that pressure on us. We have to give at the level of where God has blessed us, and also at the level of our faith is how we should give. Then sometimes God, yes, He'll stretch us and take us to another level. Uh, but if we do it in the right proportion of, of, of how God has blessed us and, and how He's dealing with us, uh, then there's the reward of the Lord. So it says uh, just common sense giving, just common sense giving, you know. So God blesses us um, in return for all of our efforts to give and be a blessing to others. Uh, and verse number eight, he says, and God is able, I just love this, because a lot of times, you know, people can give to the local church or some organization or, you know, and they're looking for somebody else. But no, God is the one that sees us. And God is the one that has all of the blessings, all of the things that we need. Then he says, if you delight yourself in me, then he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. But it says, God is able mm -hmm. to make all grace or everything but an earthly blessing uh, abound or increase or multiply towards you. That ye also have an all sufficiency, meaning to me that God is going to see to it that you don't run out. Mm -hmm. That you are not empty. That you will always have sufficiency as you give. It's always like you're giving and God will make sure that your, your, your meal barrel, your bank account, it has always something in there to be a blessing. It, it may not be totally full, but it ain't going to be empty either. You know, we all go through challenges and stages and phases, you know, in our lives and in our finances. But God says, I got you. So when we know that God is our source, and that is a limitless source. God is a, God is a limitless source. So while we sometimes run around, you know, uh, stressing out in anxiety and how we're going to make it and how this is going to work out, God already has all that in control. A lot of times, if we just focus on sowing and giving and loving and obeying what God says, we don't have to worry about stressing out because we are resting in the goodness of God and the provision of God and a lot of times in the protection of God. So that we have an all sufficiency. Say all sufficiency. All sufficiency. To me, that's more than enough. Yes. To me, that is it's satisfied. Mm -hmm. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Yes, he does. And he says, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm -hmm. So to see your life blessed day after day and day after day and month after month and year after year, that is a testament and a testimony to the goodness of God in your life. That God is present there. And the blessing of God is upon you. That we haven't done it illegal, that we haven't done it outside of God's word, but we prosper because of the truth of God's word that's living and abiding on the inside of us that's come alive. Amen. And we know that God is God and that he's manifested himself in our lives. Amen. So that we have sufficiency in all things and may abound to every good work, every good work. So that uh, we will multiply, increase. It's like going overboard, going over and beyond in every good work. So God will position us that where there is a need that we can be a partaker, that we can uh, sow into the needs that other people may have mm -hmm. in all the different directions and avenues. And listen, I don't believe it's just confined to the church as we know it. We can be a blessing to people in so many ways and so many areas of our lives that God gives them that right and he gives them that authority to do that. Whether they're homeless, living on the bread, whether somebody just, hey, man, I just, I just need somebody to help me with my rent or, you know, having a challenge here this month or whatever it is, God will position us to be a blessing to somebody else's life mm -hmm. outside of the four walls. Mm -hmm. So if we look for opportunities to bless people, a lot of people don't want that because uh, they are so selfish. 
you know, and they, 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 they'll hoard the things that they have as though they were theirs or, or as though that they're going to be able to take them with them when they die and when they leave. But we brought nothing in the world and certain that we're going to take nothing out. I'd rather be sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. Because if I, as we do that, we're leaving a lasting legacy and a heritage in the earth. That if nothing else, somebody will remember us as givers and sowers, which really is a demonstration of love. The demonstration of love. So as we pour out, God pours more into us. People say, well, how are you being blessed? Because I'm honoring the word of God. I'm not afraid. I'm not intimidated. You know, I'm not holding back because God is my source. And whatever I give, God is going to make sure, according to his word, he make all grace and blessing and favor abound towards me. So we don't know where the reward of God is. We just obey God and we walk every day and we pray and we love God and we love people and then God says, I'm going to reward you at this moment and this time. And we don't know how the reward is coming, but when God blesses us, we know it's God. Mm -hmm. And we praise and we thank him for what he has done. So, uh, in verse number 9, he says, As it is written, he hath dispersed the broad and hath given to the poor. His righteousness uh, remains forever. Forever. The Amplified says, as it is written, he, the benevolent person, scatters abroad. That means it's more than, to me, it's more than one avenue. Scatter. Or like a broadcaster. So if, if, if we just focus on, on one source of giving and one source of sowing, I believe we limit our return. Because really, it's, it's almost like an investment. You want diversification in your in investment. That's why in James 1, the Lord talks about pure and undefiled for the Father is this, is to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction and keep us from unspotted from the world. So if nothing else outside of the local church or in conjunction or connection with the local church, we should be looking after widows and orphans. Mm -hmm. Those that are really in need or that we really can help or support. So that has to be, and James, the Lord's brother, <laughs> They didn't really believe in Jesus while he was living, but something happened to him. To where he was changed and converted because he saw his brother giving and loving and always showing in the past. So if you're around people with that kind of heart and that kind of mindset and that kind of attitude, it starts to kind of just rub off on you. To where you may know a stingy person. <laughs> and they start hanging around a giver, you, you know, sooner or later, something to rub off on that person. And they'll find themselves giving where they wouldn't have normally gave or helped somebody else out. And they find themselves positioned, somebody says, well, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Because the Spirit of God begins to deal with all of us that we can really walk in the true nature of God in the earth. And some of this is a growing process. That if we humble ourselves under the uh, mighty hand of God and the presence of God, uh, then we'll be truly blessed. So we get out of that pride and out of that selfishness. Mm -hmm. It says, not only that minister is seed uh, to the soil for the soil, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed so and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Okay. Now, in the Amplified, it says, and God who provides seed for the soil, so we know that God provides the seed that we sow. Gives us the strength, gives us the ability, to, even the gifting of God, the, the talent. It's God that's blessed, that blesses us. So we got to say all things that we have come from God. Somebody say, man, that's a sharp person. They're very intelligent. They're just smart. They're just on point. Well, how do you think they from God? To open up their mind, to understand, to comprehend, that's still the goodness of God. Still the goodness of God. So we always got to go back to the fact that it's, it's God is the source of everything that we have, everything that we know. So he says that God will provide seed for the world and bread for the eating will also provide and multiply your resources. Your resources for sowing. That's comforting. That's comforting right there to know that God is going to supply us the resources that we need. 
to sow. When we have a heart and a mind to sow, because God already knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. So he said, well, they got a giving heart. I, I need to make sure they, they got plenty of supply mm -hmm. to be able to sow and give and to help other people out because they have a heart for giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know one of the things I think is tragic, especially for the quote-unquote church is concerned, not even to say the body of Christ, because I think sometimes we get, you know, what people call the church and the body of Christ, you know, kind of confused and mixed up. Because people can be, you know, in the church, in the building, but not necessarily be in the body of Christ. But the body of Christ as born-again believers always should have a strong love for one another. No matter where they are, no matter what they have missing, no matter what the race is, but the support side to be a blessing. Every tribe, every nation, every tongue, even sometimes we may not understand everything about them, but yet we should be a blessing to those that are truly in the body of Christ. Amen. Because it's the word of God. Right. Most of the New Testament, well, you know, primarily is written to the church. Mm. Brothers and sisters that are in the body of Christ that really say they're born again and know Jesus Christ. So we have a responsibility to make sure the body is taken care of. If somebody has a need, then we supply the need. We get together in the group, we pray over, you know, and there's some, at a certain point we got to stop playing and just do something. So well, let's pray over it. Let's pray about it. No, if there's a need, certain things we don't even need to pray about. Amen. We just need to simply obey the word of God. If that person is in need and we have it in within our power to help them and aid them, strength, we shouldn't be talking about oh, praying, oh, God, just bless them. All of our people be praying, Lord, go on by the hospital and bless them. No, God said, you go by the hospital and pray for them. Go by the nursing home. God given us the power and the word of God and the authority to go lay hands upon the sick and see them recover. Mm -hmm. So if he's blessed us with monitor of great gain and increase. And a lot of people, you know, don't have jobs right now, are struggling in certain areas. You know, people that are really in need, you know, we shouldn't shut up our bowels and our heart of mercy and compassion towards people. Because we never know when we'll be in some kind of a need. That we would need somebody else's help, no matter what it is. May not necessarily be money, but you know, a need is a need, a need is a need. Mm -hmm. So if there's a need, we ought to be filling it and being busy about our father's business. So he says uh, that he will give uh, bread for eating, will also provide and multiply your multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness which manifests itself in active goodness and kindness and church. That's what real righteousness does. Just like they talk talking about real, you know, true religion, true righteousness, true salvation. And having been born again, it has certain attributes. It has certain qualities about it that's in, 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 that are in an external demonstration and not just talking about it. It's literally actually doing something. Mm -hmm. So if you look and you read about the life of Jesus Christ, he was always doing something. You never had to wonder about who Jesus was because he always demonstrated it. And the only people that really couldn't see it was religious people because they were always looking out of their eyes of criticism. And what is he doing? Why is he doing that? Why is he hanging around with, uh, around with people that's drinking and smoking and cursing and lying and all that stuff? Because he was trying to bring change in their lives. He wasn't worried about getting caught up in what they were doing and some people do, but you, you better you gotta be careful in life. No, Jesus knew who he was. Mm -hmm. He knew the power that he possessed. He knew the authority that he had been given by his father. And so he did not allow himself to be distracted. All right, now, it says in verse 11, being enriched in everything, mm -hmm. or in all things, and in every way, so that you can be generous, and your generosity as it, as it is, ministered by us will bring forth thanksgiving to God. Cause people to rejoice and praise and thank God for our generosity. Say generosity, say generosity. Generosity. Because of our generosity and our willing to give and to be a blessing to other people. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes it looks like, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm giving all I can and, and look like, you know, nobody uh, recognizes, nobody cares, or nobody said, attaboy, attaboy, good job, whatever it is. But God has a set time to reward you for your giving. So your focus should always be on I'm doing it from my heart and I'm doing it as unto the Lord and what the Lord is going to reward. And uh, so he says uh, in Matthew 6.38, let's go there, Matthew 6.38. Because God will begin to touch people's hearts. So however God does it, I mean, he still uses people in the earth. So if we're so in love and mercy and compassion and forgiveness, God will see to it that we are rewarded for everything that we do. So he'll make sure that we're not held back on. Those things are released in our lives. Uh, let's look at Luke uh, 6 and 38. And, uh, you know, they uh, said this is law of reciprocity, law of return, or the law of sowing and reaping. So we can rest in the promise of God. So here in Luke, uh, let's look at uh, verse number 38. Uh, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give it to your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And uh, the Amplified says, Give and gifts will be given to you. Now isn't that something? Some things would be just downright miraculous. <laughs> it says, you give gifts, the law of sowing and reaping, and gifts will be given unto you. He says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over. I mean, it's not going to be shabby, it's not going to be shoddy. You're not going to be standing like, oh man, I, that is just so disappointing. No, because God wants to bless us that what our joy would be full. Mm -hmm. He's not going to allow you to sow and to give and love and, 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 and to, you know, just have that nature of God and then he, he rewards your return. You see him looking like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Now, it's super abundance and sufficient, sufficiency that God brings in our lives. Mm -hmm. Taking us to the next level, taking us to the next place, because as we sow and then God blesses us, then it should encourage us to keep on sowing, not to discourage us. So God blesses us, and then that encouragement comes, and then we see that this is what God did. And we're not doing it just because of the blessing, but because we are connected to the blessor that owns everything. So he says, that uh, be a uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, overflowing, <laughs> uh, will they pour into a pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag. So uh, it's almost like you got to go, you know, you, you got you to make room. You got to say, what I'm carrying, what I, what I intended to hold all of what God promised me, uh, I got to go get something larger. So that's how God wants to increase and bless us in our lives. So we can't think too small. We got to think sober. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith because God is not a little God. He's a big God that supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So Jesus wasn't a beggar, poor, broke, living under some bread. He was well supplied and taken care of by the Father. And then those that followed him that were healed and delivered, as we talked about last week from Luke uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, and that were delivered, they were so grateful 
to where they begin to support the ministry of Jesus with their money mm -hmm. and their finances. Mm -hmm. So it's something about grateful people. Grateful people open up their heart. When you are blessing the people, when you are an encouragement to people, when you are helping people to be better and stronger and wiser, they will remember your goodness and your kindness. If they really sincerely grateful. <laughs> Some of them that followed Jesus only was following because of the fish and the loaves. But these people understood that if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be out of my situation or circumstance. So they know it was God that delivered them. And uh, some of you talked about cast out evil spirits and demons out of their lives. Man, that's enough to praise God for and to give God everything you have. I mean, total surrender to the Lord. For rescuing us. So, um, he says in the latter part, for with what measure you deal or you meet, with the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be, it will be measured back to you. Whatever the benefit is, however you bless them, he says it's going to be measured back to you again. So, if, not, if nothing else, I mean, that's that's like a hundred percent guarantee for God to bless us. So that's encouragement enough. Mm -hmm. And to know who promised it. God did. The Lord promised to bless us. Uh, and to make sure that our needs are met and uh, they're, they are supplied uh, in our lives. All right, let me, let me go over a few things here with just uh, common sense, uh, practical uh, wisdom concerning um, prosperity and success in our lives. Uh, number one is uh, honor the Lord uh, with our tithes and offerings. Uh, give to the poor. Give charitably. Love and help other people. Those are some of the uh, primary foundational things that every believer, every Christian, every child of God should do because of the nature of God that's on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. It's the honor of the Lord. Uh, number two is people need to locate uh, themselves or yourself where you are financially. So people are struggling, you know, in a lot of areas where their money is concerned and where bills are concerned and where debt is concerned. And so you got to get your head out of the sand and say, this is where I am. How are we going to get from here to there, point A to point B? And a lot of it still is the foundation of honoring God. And being competent and being consistent and saying, God is my source. Now, certain sacrifices that we make for the Lord and the blessing of the Lord to come upon us, sometimes it's not overnight. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord, like David said, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart because you're constantly sowing. And so if you continue to sow, you continue to sow, and, and every day you're sowing, and every month you're sowing, every year you're sowing, now it's like you got something in reserve. It's like you're making deposits, and you deposit, and deposit upon deposit, and deposit, and all that just stuff piling up for you to be blessed by God. That's why the word of God comes out that that's how we can be blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed when we go and blessed with, that we just blessed all around in every area and every way and every I mean no matter where we are, where we go. Whatever the state, whatever the city, whatever the country, where we find ourselves, we're still blessed by God. Mm -hmm. Number three is when people are in debt, they need to find out how much, who do we owe, develop a plan, and then they need to live on less than they make. Construct the budget. And so certain things we must walk out, carry out. So some people, you just got to do the best you can do. <laughs> and that time and that season of your life. You know, I know people that are stressed out over, I can't do this, I don't have that, and oh God, what am I going to do here? I mean, you can't just worry yourself to death. So, in Philippians, it talks about um, 
Be careful, agents, for nothing but to be praying about everything. That's right. Amen. So we just got to pray over and just give to God. Mm -hmm. He don't want us losing sleep, mm -hmm. being stressed out, and now our health is going down because we're so worried about how we're going to make it and how we're going to survive. He said, no, keep giving, keep loving, keep sowing, keep reading the Word of God, keep praying without ceasing, and everything give thanks. So we still need to thank God in the good times as well as the bad times. Mm -hmm. we got to thank God. So as we sow, he says that we're going to reap the benefits of our sowing. He can just labor in the kingdom of God and there's no reward. Mm -hmm. It's not God. So he says, go out in the yard and work. And he says, well, whatever is right, mm -hmm. that's what I'm, That's what you're going to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. So we can't go work and labor, even, you know, you know like natural jobs, you get, you're going to get a paycheck. So how much more is the Lord going to reward us and pay us? That's why a lot of times people say, well, what's going on? And I said, man, I'll, I'll preach to one like I preach to a thousand. You know, one guy said, well, what happened, you know, if you, if, well, I was here. I don't know about where nobody else is, but I'm in the position in the place where God told me to be at. So I've hit the, I've hit the clock. I've clutched the clock. <laughs> and so I'm going to be paid and rewarded by the Lord. Amen. So I'm not worried about who's doing this and who's doing that. I'm going to do what God told me to do. Amen. Then I know that my blessing is going to continue to flow. In my life. Mm -hmm. So we must always honor God no matter what. And uh, for some people, you know, when their bill and debt is concerned, I mean, they need to um, begin to look at a plan to pay them off, starting with the smallest one, pay that one off. Things are just pretty simple and basic. And um, then you work on the next highest one. Pay that one off, add the money to the next one, pay that one off, add that money for the previous two, now you got three, you begin to pay that one off and pay them off rapidly. You know, I, I was uh, in a store just the other day and uh, I was looking at a television and this thing was $2,500. I said, oh my God. I said, you better talk, you better turn yourself on, and turn yourself off. I said, my goodness. I said, that's a lot of money. You know, and some people, they spend an impulse, and I'm not saying they, they should have my things if they desire to have that thing, whatever. But if they can't properly afford that, then they may need to go and find the six hundred ninety nine dollar TV. Mm -hmm. But I was just appalled, you know, about you know the, how expensive certain things are, and we need to bargain shop and make sure that we're in the will of God and pray over it and say, is this really a need? It's just like with net Netflix, the video people. You know, they've been about it and made some changes in, in their company and things like that, and it backfired on them. And the people said, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so some people, they have, like, their cars paid off, for example, you know, and um, no payments, and they, they go right back and get another car. Um, you know, that's what, if they want to do that, that's fine, you know, th that's what they do. Um, but sometimes you need to reap the benefits. And say, I enjoy this not having car payment time in my life. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can solve, maybe, maybe that's an avenue, I'm just talking, maybe that's just an avenue where we can consider sowing and giving more and being a blessing. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and helping other people with that income that's been uh, released that we don't have to worry about paying anymore. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just pay ourselves. Uh, I don't know. But it's just maybe something to consider. So those are some of the things uh, that we must do, we should consider uh, doing uh, in our lives. Uh, I was talking with a realtor, uh, and uh, we were you were talking about some certain things going on in all levels of the economy and all aspects of uh, business. And, um, you know, and she was saying, well, right now, you know, a lot of people are looking at scaling back. You know, and they got or maybe their credit was good enough to get a house or whatever it was. But now they find themselves in a position to where companies are cutting back hours and are letting people go and uh, they can't afford certain things. Mm -hmm. So they have to you have to make decisions in those type of situations. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes you can't just sit there and just say, okay, well, and sometimes it has to be some common sense, and you have to take action. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so there's nothing wrong with downscaling. It's fine. I said, well, we just don't believe the Lord, and God will take care of We'll praise God. They didn't do that. But for some people, it's in their best interest through just wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. to get out. And um, doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you're doubting or you don't love God or, you know, people try to put pressure on people in those kind of situations. And um, you just sometimes have to do what you got to do. It'll be all right. You know, you got single parents. You got people that's divorced. And what are you going to tell those people? So they need uh, counsel. Godly counsel is, a, is of a great price where our, our money and our finances is concerned, if we need help in those areas. Uh, so God wants to bless us and take care of us and supply um, our needs. So we still must confess the Word of God, believe God, and know that He's going to supply us and take care of us, and that great things God will do in our lives um, where His Word is concerned, where His Word is concerned, so to prosper us. So as we meditate on the Word of God, as we've talked about in Joshua um, chapter 1, and also in Psalms uh, chapter 1, and having the Word of God, because one of the things that people must understand that real prosperity and success, you know, is the Word of God. I mean, the worlds were created by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So the God spoke the world into existence by his word. Mm -hmm. So if we have God's word in our lives, it points us in the right direction. It helps us throughout life situations and circumstances. And so we must become students of the word of God because for every problem that we face in society and the world, I believe there is a solution in the word of God. Mm -hmm. There is a solution. There is an answer in the Word of God. If people want the answer and the solution. Right. Some people don't want the answer or the solution, or they don't want to be pulled out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. They kind of sometimes want to do what they want to do. Um, but some things require us to change, and nothing else to change our mind. Mm -hmm. And our minds will be renewed by the Word of God so we can think like God thinks. And as we think like God thinks, then we have prosperity and success um, uh, in our lives. So uh, we do what's right because it's right, and we honor the Word of God because that's what He says to do. So our faithfulness and um, our loyalty, our love, uh, our integrity, uh, being good stewards of what God gives us, what He brings into our hands and our lives, and uh, we honor God's Word, and God takes care of us. So the Lord is gracious and wonderful. And uh, so we thank and we praise him for all the people that uh, the Lord has done in our lives. Uh, amen? Amen. amen? Amen. So we will uh, be here Sunday for our uh, Mission Sunday, our Mission Sunday, um, this Sunday um, at our 1030 a.m. service. So we're looking at having a good time, missions, nations. Um, we'll have, you know, flags and, and banners and things up and uh, uh, make it just a wonderful, exciting time. Um, to stir people up and encourage them uh, where obeying the Great Commission is and really doing the real work of the Kingdom of God and the work of Christ and reaching out to other people um, that really need to hear the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're moving towards that. And uh, um, it'll be a great blessing um, on this coming Sunday where missions is concerned and reaching out to other people. Amen. Praise God. <coughs>